While it was very hard for me to pick my top 10 best movies of the year, it was surprisingly easy for me to pick my top 10 worst movies of the year. There are the movies we knew would be bad, but then there are also the movies that were shockingly bad, huge disappointments. Yes, as the small screen steps up its game and movies shift towards cinematic universes and franchises, some studios made brutal missteps as they blindly tried to adapt. Now let's start with an easy one at number 10, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Now to be fair, it's not like Kevin James went and changed the formula for the sequel, at least not creatively, because he did change the release date, segueing from January to April, proving that Paul Blart can only thrive in a movie wasteland. And without all that box office cash to distract, this franchise was revealed to be the bumbling TV movie it truly is. Then number 9 is Hot Pursuit, epitomizing the worst stereotypes of female comedies. And to make matters worse, it came out the same year as Spy and Trainwreck, two incredibly progressive female comedies. Yes, Hot Pursuit and movies like it belong in Hollywood's rearview mirror, and makes Reese Witherspoon seem hopelessly out of date. As for Sofia Vergara, though, we understand she just wanted to get a movie on her resume. Next, talk about not getting it is Vacation at number 8. As families become closer and spending time with your parents is becoming less and less taboo, this new vacation played off of tired family dynamic stereotypes. It was also overly reliant on gross-out humor that wasn't funny, plus most offensive at all, it made the new Griswold patriarch a fool. No matter how everyone else saw Clark, he was always still the king of his own castle, while this new movie made Rusty the court jester. Then, speaking of clowning around, at number 7 is Mordecai, the best evidence we have yet that Johnny Depp is in need of a career intervention. All of his bad habits are here. A weird accent, exaggerated expressions, and of course, some kind of wig or mustache to hide behind. While Depp undoubtedly struck gold when he created Captain Jack Sparrow, it seems he is unable to fully understand his mainstream success, and now desperately tries to repeat it with stabs in the dark dancing like a trained monkey in a little suit with a mustache. Okay, that was a bit harsh, but hey, you only hold interventions when you care. But I found little to care about with number six, The Man from UNCLE. After a nifty opening sequence, Guy Ritchie's 1960s Cold War caper all went downhill from there. Henry Cavill, aka Superman, seemed to be trying to make some kind of bold creative choice by playing his Napoleon solo as gay, the sparks between him and Army Hammer were undeniable, but the filmmakers never let that idea get off the ground. The result is a closeted action movie in every sense of the word. Then, I hate to do it, but number five is Victor Frankenstein. James McAvoy is on the cusp of leading man stardom, yet his leading turn here is sure to send him back a bit, despite his best efforts. This movie itself is an abomination, clearly a victim of mad studio executive tinkering. Plus, Daniel Radcliffe's offbeat career choices are getting a bit tiring and repetitive. I'm less sad, though, to list Crimson Peak at number four, yet I do feel some sympathy for Guillermo del Toro, who seems to have no idea he made such a bad movie. Acting like a mad genius himself, del Toro apparently got lost in his own production design, making a movie to fit his lavish sets rather than the other way around. If he's not careful, he's just going to become the Mexican Tim Burton, although I can think of worse fates. Another Hollywood heavyweight who needs to course correct fast is Hugh Jackman, whose pan is number three. Usually, I feel bad when Jackman's non-X-Men movies don't connect at the box office, but this one deserves to be fed to the crocodile. Entirely too clever for its own good, Joe Wright and company reimagined Peter Pan simply for the sake of reimagining it. And seriously, considering all the complaints about Disney's recent live-action fairy tales, how is it that no other studio can reasonably challenge them? Then, the second worst movie of 2015 is Brad Bird's Tomorrowland. Another creative genius falters. But that's what you get when you decide to team up with Damon Lindelof. Not only did Tomorrowland fail to deliver any Disney magic, but unlike The Martian, it presented a bleak future which it blamed on the audience. And worst of all, it featured a star-crossed romance between George Clooney and a little girl. What? But even all that was not as bad as Terminator Genesis, my number one worst movie of 2015. 
While I was intrigued by the idea of evil John Connor in the trailers, lo and behold, the actual film couldn't even get that right. And to see James Cameron's brilliant original two films twisted into the most offensive studio drivel was heartbreaking. Basically, Terminator Genesis pitted two Luddites against Skynet in a film that was maddeningly stupid to anyone who's ever seen a movie about artificial intelligence. At this point, I don't think anyone wants this franchise to be back. And those are my top 10 worst movies of 2015. Share your own lists down below and be sure to vote for your favorite top 10 movies and be on the trailer's annual poll. The link is in the video description. You can see my top 10 movies of the year and my list of hidden gems right now.